Have you heard the news? Things are no longer a dollar at Dollar Tree. They're a dollar twenty-five. I mean, it's only a quarter, but a quarter is a quarter. So I ran to my Dollar Tree, stocked up on some things. I am so excited for today's projects. Today we're gonna make some DIY home decor that looks not like a dollar. My name is Jorge if you're new here and I love all things home decor, DIYs, and of course, I want these DIYs to look very um, expensive, but minimal, modern, minimalist, custom made, lots of great things, and I love DIY, you know, it's only a dollar. Let's get into today's project. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna make you guess for this one. I'm gonna have a large foam board right here from Dollar Tree. Also have three packs of these floral foam circles and they're coming in a pack of two, so six circles total. Can you guess what I'm making? That's right, we're making some wall art. I love creating wall art. It's very fun and just inspiring and just practicing that part of the brain, you know? It's always good. So we're gonna make some minimalist wall art using these two items and some paint, of course. Now. For framing, of course you cannot get a large frame at the dollar store, but you can just reuse maybe some frames that you have around the house or just go to a thrift store. They have lots of, um, I'm always seeing lots of frames there that you can probably get. And of course the size of the frame will determine the size of the artwork, but we're gonna make some large one with this. I cut and measured to the appropriate size of my frame. In this case, I just had to trim the end off. Now I'm gonna take my circles and glue them onto the board. You can pretty much place them however you like. I kind of place them evenly like this. Kind of looks like a Lego to be honest with you, but that's all right. for the fun part it is time to paint our artwork now you can use any colors you'd want and by the way I'm using some paint from Dollar Tree and some craft paint not the best quality but it'll just get the job done for this case but I would recommend a good quality acrylic paint I am going to go on a minimal route with this and kind of just paint this uh, monochromatic color so I'm painting the entire thing sort of an off-white maybe a beige by mixing some white paint and some light brown paint. Next up, let's go in and create the darker tone. For the darker tone, uh, basically the same color, but just a little bit more color to it. And now I'm going around each circle, trying to create just like a perfect diameter around each. And this kind of creates a nice, I don't know, maybe illusion. And then on top of the foam circle, I am kind of brushing it on there, but not the center. I'm trying to leave the center as white as possible. At the very end, I'm going in with my brush and kind of creating these U's around the sides of each. Um, that just creates like a nice brush stroke that I visually think is appealing. But that honestly does it for this project. I let that fully dry and then mounted it into my frame that I thrifted. And that's it for this project. These glass cylinder vases are probably the most DIY Dollar Tree thing out there. These are a classic, a staple, very practical too, because I actually use these to put like florals inside like vintage vases. Anyways, we're gonna do an Ikebana vase, very minimal. So much beauty and elegance in those types of arrangements. So we're gonna make an Ikebana vase using this glass vase, this bowl, and these skewers. First step I did, and I did this off camera, I apologize, but was to space out and mark um, where my dowels are gonna go. In this case, well, I'm not using dowels. These are bamboo skewers from the Dollar Tree in the kitchen section. I cut them to the right size. They're actually easy to cut with some scissors. 
Um, I, I forgot how many I ended up using, but a couple. Next, I'm taking my square here to draw perpendicular lines just to make sure that they will be glued on nice and straight. Now, I tried a couple of different glues here and I ended up just using some hot glue. I don't know if this was the right choice, but it ended up working out for me. But maybe I would recommend Super Gel. I feel like that would be a little bit more durable. Now that that's complete, it is time to put our bowl, but oh crap, I broke it. So I actually ended up getting this red one, also from Dollar Tree, it's a little bit smaller, which has actually worked out better. I am using this drill attachment to cut out a circular shape very carefully, not to press too hard and break the bowl. I'll go ahead and link this down below for you, it's pretty affordable. Next, we're gonna glue this onto our cylinder using some super gel, but first, I thought I'd create some lines in between each dowel using some hot glue and it's okay if they're not straight but i feel like this creates a more handmade look once this is complete it'll look like a ceramic handmade vase i'm gluing this to the bowl using some super gel and just pressing uh, lightly on it it actually dries rather quickly i'm filling in the gap with some hot glue gun just to make the vase look more holistic now we're gonna paint this. The paint I'm using is sort of this like burnt red, some black paint and some baking soda. I'm not the biggest user of the baking soda technique, but I'm gonna do it this time. I'm gonna mix that up together and paint the entire exterior of the vase. This is gonna make the vase look like a ceramic piece. Very beautiful and nice sort of dark red, which I think is nice, a little bit of color. So I was actually going to paint the inside of the bowl, but I kind of like that pop of red against this more, I guess, rusty red. So we're going to leave it at this and just let that fully dry. following for some time you know that I'm kind of obsessed with candle holders can't stop won't stop buying them in particular candlesticks and when I saw these at Dollar Tree I literally almost bought them all out these are made out of glass these are so cool definitely run and get these because I feel like they're gonna sell out fast these are perfect just the way they are just simple glass ones or let's take this a little bit further and make them look like stone so this is gonna be a quick and easy DIY to be honest with you, I have never done hydro dipping before, but I've seen it on YouTube and it looks really fun, so I had to try it. First thing I did is spray paint my can holders flat black, let that fully dry. Now I'm going to hydro dip. With this, I'm creating two colors using sort of the satin bronze and the flat black again, and kind of just spraying it into a tub of water. This creates sort of a ring, maybe like a marbled effect almost. Then you take your can holders or whatever you're dipping, just dip it in there and that will just stick to your object. In this case, I'm just doing two, so there's enough to probably make a couple more. By the way, this tub is also from Dollar Tree. I seriously can't believe these can holders are from Dollar Tree. They look much more expensive now, and I really love the color combination. I'll go ahead and leave a link to the spray paint that I use. Full disclosure, spray paint can be flammable, especially the fumes of spray paint. So you definitely wanna allow these to fully cure, which might take a day or a few days before you light a candle. Okay, so this one's a little bit weird. Um, so I was in the kitchen section and I saw these things right here. These are splatter screens. I think they're used for like, you put them on your um, pots so that things don't splatter when you're cooking. So I bought this like round one with like the little handle and this one with the, or knob and then handle. And I also got this like paper towel holder, trash can. <laughs> I think it's a trash can. I don't know. Uh, and this like circular ornament, not ornament, uh, gift, gift tube. So 
What are we gonna make with this? We're gonna make some sculptures. To be honest, I have no idea what these are actually called, but I saw something similar on RH's website for obviously not a dollar, although they're beautiful. I am going to spray paint everything flat black, just removing this plastic tab here on the handle. This is going to, I don't know, just feel very timeless to me. And honestly, you can do this maybe like a bronze, whatever color you'd like. Once that fully dries, it's time to move on to the cement. Yes, that's right. I had to get in a cement project in here. So I am going to take this gift cylinder tube using the top part and kind of cutting a slit, which is going to hold one of the splatter screens. And then for the other base, I'm going to use this I guess trash can. So for cement, if you haven't worked with it, it's very easy to do. Just wear some gloves and make sure that you don't create a lot of dust. Add some water to your cement mix and you kind of want like a thick pancake batter consistency. I ended up making a couple batches to fill this tube here. Um, and by the way, full disclosure when working with cement, do not clean up in the sink. You do not want the stuff in your drains. I would take this outside or just let it harden and dispose. Um, any like excess cement that you might have. So I'm taking this and pouring it into the larger trash can and just putting in um, my towel holder in there. Now this is gonna take a couple of hours to cure. I just left it overnight. And of course you wanna get some of those air bubbles out so make sure to tamp it out. And I feel like this is just better to watch than explain. It is the following day and everything has hardened so I'm going to release them from the mold. The plastic one's kind of easy, kind of just wiggle the plastic and it will pop right off. Look at that, very very nice. The other cardboard one is going to be a little bit trickier but we'll get to it in a second. I'm going to do some wet sanding using 150 grit sandpaper so I'm just dipping it in some water and sanding it with the sandpaper to not create a lot of dust and honestly just sanding sort of the top part and the edge to get it nice and smooth. And of course, I recommend you wear gloves whenever working with cement. Now for the other mold, it's gonna be a little bit trickier because the paper cardboard kind of sticks to the cement. But honestly, if you just wet it and use some sandpaper, it'll come right off. Now, this is optional, but I like to add a little bit of color, a little bit of patina per se. So I'm gonna just take some brown paint that I wet with water and just brushing it onto the cement. It'll kind of absorb it unevenly and sort of create almost like a stone effect, which looked very beautiful. And lastly, it is time to glue on our splatter screen. So I'm gonna just take um, the knob there and kind of just use some muscle and put it into the towel holder to hold it into place because it slides down. We're gonna use some super gel. Maybe you can use some hot glue too. Um, just put it on the end of the towel holder and kind of just hold it into place while it dries. And that does it for this project. Very simple, very, I don't know, unique maybe. Let's take a look at the final result. Well, I think that just about does it, but I do have one more DIY. That is this right here, and that is exclusive to my website, gasarefine.com. Don't worry, it's all free content over there. I'll go ahead and put the description below so you can go watch that there. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I really had fun making these, you know I always do. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, I don't know if I wanna hear the concerns, but that'll do it for today's video. I hope you have an awesome day, and I'll catch you in the next. Oh wait, check out these other videos. I think that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this video. But anyways, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next one, bye.